Hello friends, this video on transport in plants and animals part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now any discussion of cir on circulatory system has to start with blood. Because blood, we, as we all know, is that fluid which flows throughout our body. So it is an excellent medium to transport substances from one part to another. So it is something like this. Let's suppose you have a bus. So that bus will also have a bus route. So if that bus is covering all the places in your city, then that bus is an excellent medium of transportation. That means you want to go from anywhere to anywhere, that bus is definitely go, going to cover those places. So in other words, we can say that blood answers your question of who transports. So it is the blood who actually helps in transportation. So let us talk more about blood. Let's see what is blood. We all know what is blood. You get a cut, what happens? It starts bleeding. You see a red colored fluid coming out of your wound and that red colored fluid is nothing but blood. So blood is the circulatory medium. So blood actually, you know, it, it, it's kind of ruling the entire circulatory system because it is the medium through which substances get circulated throughout our body. It is a fluid connective tissue. Why connective tissue? What, what is a connective tissue? A type of tissue which connects two different parts of the body. So blood since it is flowing from one part to another, so in a way it is trying to connect the two places. For example, you have two cities. So let's say two cities or two towns. So let us say this is town A and this is town B. So if you have a road which connects these two towns, then what will happen? Then people from town A can travel to town B. Similarly, people from town B can also travel to town A. So basically, this road is connecting town A with town B. Similarly, since blood is flowing throughout the body, so it is in a way connecting different parts of the body together. And since it is capable of flowing, so it is a fluid, so blood is a fluid connective tissue. If you look at the composition of blood, it consists of 78% water and 22% solids. So what are the solids which are present in blood? So these solids could be proteins, minerals, lipids, glucose, amino acids. So all these things could be the solids which are present in blood. But almost 78% of it is nothing but water. And that is why it is so much like, you know, it is very fluidy and it is very easy to flow from one place to another. So blood being a fluid can actually connect different systems of the body by transporting gases, digested food, hormones and waste materials to different body parts. So that's how blood, you see, it's, it's the most uh, important thing when we talk about circulation inside our body. So the gases which we breathe in or breathe out, so they need to be transported between different body parts. Again, the food which gets digested in stomach and intestine, they also need to be transported to other parts. The hormones which are released by some specific glands, but they are also needed by other cells of the body. So they are also transported by blood. So that way blood serves a very important purpose. So here in this picture, you can actually see these red and blue lines, which shows the transport of blood throughout the body. So you see, blood flows from your feet to your head, again from head to toe and again from both sides, it flows throughout your hands and everywhere. So blood actually reaches each and every corner of your body. Right now, why do you have these separate red and blue lines? So the red lines indicate the blood which is rich in oxygen and the blue lines indicate those that blood which is rich in carbon dioxide. So basically one is oxygenated blood. So the red lines all denotes the oxygenated blood. So the good blood you can say which is rich in oxygen and the blue lines denote the deoxygenated blood. That means the blood which is rich in carbon dioxide. So the red ones actually 
carries the blood to different body parts because that's the good blood and deoxygenated blood it is it has come from different body parts because all the body parts have given out their carbon dioxide so that blood is rich in carbon dioxide and it is very important that we keep these two separate because oxygen and carbon dioxide should not get mixed up inside our body because one is needed by the cells the other one is to be thrown out of the cells so that is why these are very distinct. Now, how are they flowing in uh, different tubes? Because there are different vessels which carry this blood. So there are specific vessels to carry oxygenated blood. There are specific vessels to carry deoxygenated blood. Now, as we go ahead with the lesson, we will get to know about all of these details. So, Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.